getting drilled by the drill sergeant. An intimidating and demanding figure immortalized by Vietnam War movies, the drill sergeant is responsible for transforming American civilians into professional soldiers of the U.S. Army. His many forms of instruction can be harsh, physically draining, humiliating, and sometimes beyond relief, but they're the very thing a recruit is going to need if they are to become a true soldier. First Encounters Homesick, slightly overweight, and very afraid, U.S. Army recruits reporting for basic training first lay eyes on the man or woman who will make their life hell as soon as they arrive at camp in the early morning. Once the buses are all parked up, they will storm on board and immediately start barking a stream of orders with a terrifying yell that will soon become the object of most of the trainees' nightmares. It's here that the drill sergeant will loudly inform the recruits they are only allowed to say two things. Yes, drill sergeant, and no drill sergeant. Like a wolf harassing a flock of sheep, the sleep-deprived rookies will be chased out of the bus and told to grab their bags as quickly as possible. The Army's code of conduct will be yelped at them, some basic commands and standing positions will be thoroughly taught, and the recruits will be told to shut up and pay attention to a video on the Army's history. Next, the recruits will be given one last chance to dispose of a long list of any forbidden items, like drugs, tobacco, alcohol, snacks, and electronic devices such as cell phones, tablets, and radios. Or, in other words, they will be presented with the first chance to see their drill sergeant go absolutely ballistic if they fail to hand over contraband. After a cushy one to two week period of processing, during which their hair is shaved, their uniforms are issued, and their official army photograph is taken, the trainees will commence basic training to be shaped into a warrior by the insults, punishments, and expletives of their dear drill sergeant. It is at this point, before they're assigned their barracks, that recruits will be given one last opportunity to quit. Many will take it, referring the comforts of civilian life to impending physical and emotional burnout. The recruits that remain are settled into their quarters and the shark attack, a process by which the trainee's pride is chipped away, is commenced. Here they will be mentally broken down and intimidated by streams of foul language by red-faced drill sergeants, whose abuse will cut to the very core of their being, as well as establish who's in charge. Over the next nine weeks, recruits will be forced to wake up at 5 a.m. pretty much every day and to go through a gauntlet of weapons training, field training, and brutal fitness exercises before lights out. They will know that to pass, they'll need to complete the Army Combat Fitness Test, a grueling evaluation consisting of deadlifts, standing power throws, push-ups, sprints, drag and carries, leg tucks, and a two-mile run. They'll also be keenly aware that any wrongdoing, lack of discipline, or low effort will result in embarrassing punishments ranging from run-of-the-mill penalties to bizarre treatments created by the ever-inventive instructors that would be more at home in a surreal movie than an army training center. Ever wished your history lessons were more interesting? Ever wished they came with powerful champions and intense battles? Well, you're in luck today. Introducing Raid Shadow Legends. This isn't just any mobile game, it's a universe full of lore, action, and history lessons. Meet Professor Death Knight, a champion here to catch us up on cool new features added to Raid in the past year. Hello pupils, it's me, Professor Death Knight, coming to you from Teleria University. Legally not a real school. Can you name the latest faction in the game? If you said the elusive Sylvan Watchers, you were right. I've got a question for you, Professor Death Knight. Besides Ultimate Death Knight, who is your favorite champion? All right, if I can't say Ultimate Death Knight, then I gotta say Ultimate Death Knight. Hmm, and what's it like seeing all these fresh new champions? Do you feel at all nervous about any replacing you? <laughs> nervous? Who said anything about being nervous? It certainly wasn't me. Unless you're talking about our good friend Akumori, the Phantom Shogun. He's a cool undead general guarding the accessory extension feature, something new for upgrading your gear. But let's be honest. 
I'm the hero you really want to use. Well, you heard it here first, guys. There's a lot happening in Raid Shadow Legends, and the best thing? You can be part of it, too. Raid is free to play on mobile and PC. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code to receive an epic champion Drake and other bonuses. Once you're in, look for me under the name Simple History, and if you're quick, you might even be able to join my clan. So what are you waiting for? Join us on the battlefield, and let's make history together. Getting physical. Employed mainly to make grown men quiver and cower, yelling is by far the most common disciplinary tool favored by drill sergeants. Whether it be incorrect uniform, a bad two-mile runtime, or poor weapon maintenance, shouting hails of profanity is one of the most effective corrections, yet it might not be around forever. Whether for good or bad, drill sergeants have recently been told to calm it down to match the sensibilities of Generation Z, who are seemingly less receptive to torrents of constructive abuse. Perhaps the answer then is to simply stare at the recruit with an ice-cold gaze, another drill instructor favorite. Getting the silent treatment is particularly unnerving since it suggests your behavior is so shocking that even the drill sergeant cannot find the words to express how much of a failure you are. But while screaming may soon be a thing of the past, other classic punishments like push-ups are still valued and seen as an excellent way to motivate and exhaust a bunch of badly behaved beginners. As such, it is most frequently handed out to troublemaking troopers who have committed minor infractions, such as being late to formation or slouching on parade. It's just one of a number of other physical punitive measures designed not only to castigate the individual, but to make them fitter, sharper, and more resilient to pain. Among the more torturous of these activities is the front-leaning rest a pose in which the rookie has to place their hands and feet into the ground while maintaining a straight back. This seemingly innocuous plank position can turn strong core muscles into jelly even after a couple of seconds, and it's considered worse than push-ups by some. If the drill sergeant is especially displeased, though, they always have the option to make these particular punishments even more taxing by ordering that recruits also strap on heavy backpacks. Words hurt. From physical exertion to psychological humiliation, drill sergeants are also equipped with a number of ego-crushing measures that can transform even the most rebellious of trainees into mumbling balls of embarrassment. What all recruits dread is perhaps the most mortifying moment in basic training, that of being given a nickname by your instructor. In fact, drill sergeants have the power to slap you with a title often a play on the words of your own name that can follow you your whole career. For example, Private Foxworth can easily become Private Foxworth Liss. If you're not a naturally gifted soldier, Robustelli can become Robust Belly if you eat too much chow, and you might get called Rick if your surname was O'Shea, simply because the words are similar and it's funny. Furthermore, they can often be based purely on appearance, with Biscuits and Gravy, Casper the Ghost, and Bulkhead dreamt up by some of the more comically refined of their ranks. The same goes for Doc Hollywood, given to a light-sensitive soldier who had to wear shades on parade. Mighty Mouse, handed to a man of small stature who was able to overcome the ladder on the obstacle course, and Serial Killer, the pet name for a rookie who combines a high weapons qualification score with a penchant for sugary breakfast treats. From saluting squirrels to apologizing to a porta potty, the drill sergeants get even more creative on coming up with their own disciplinary measures. For instance, one particularly hapless recruit who struggled to put his boots on was forced to say, I'm a pimp, I walk with a limp, I wear my shoes on the wrong feet every time he was addressed by his training instructor. On occasion, devilish drill sergeants also like to get musical, transforming well-known songs into instruments of mental coercion. A rookie caught singing in the chow line, for example, was nicknamed R&B and was forced to belt out the juvenile song slow motion every time the drill sergeant yelled, 
R and B, hit it for me. While one unit was forced to sing the SpongeBob theme tune for around 45 minutes after a picture of SpongeBob was found drawn on a sponge. Perhaps the most imaginative was the punishment doled out to a recruit caught listening to his iPod, who for two weeks after could only respond to private iPod. When the instructor barked play, he would have to sing, and when he shouted skip, he was forced to switch songs. On the other hand, to get the best out of their charges, some drill sergeants opt for a more surreal approach. One soldier relates how one time his unit was ordered to dig a six-foot deep grave for a swatted sand flea. And another recalls how if their instructor heard or smelled a back-end product, he would tell them to turn on the vacuum cleaner, at which point the recruits would suck in the air to cleanse the area of foul vapors. While their methods may fatigue, embarrass, and bamboozle their trainees, drill sergeants have proven time and time again that they are experts at transforming unsullied civilians into certified killers. As such, whether it be standard physical punishment, demeaning nicknames, twisted songs, or even commands that straddle the absurd, real soldiers would rather thank their drill sergeant for the pain and confusion than complain about it.